Hello everyone and welcome to the Dice Commando YouTube channel. I'm Andrew with you here as always. This is Go Again, a fabulous video cast covering the trading card game Flesh and Blood. This video and others like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. Please show your support with a like and subscribe and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. If you want to get involved with the channel, consider becoming a channel member. There are many benefits to channel membership including access to our Discord, exclusive deck tech and strategy videos, and the opportunity to help create channel content. I want to sincerely thank all our channel members, as I truly couldn't do this without your support. You guys rock. Go Commando! Hello everyone, welcome back to Dice Commando and go again, a fabulous cast. Josh the Intern has come out of his Monarch release sabbatical, and, and he's back joining us. I have so many questions for him. What he's playing, how he's feeling about it, all of his victories, his Bolton Saber build, and all sorts of other stuff. But we're going to get right into it. All right, guys. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. And Josh, man, welcome back. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, we're, we're doing okay. Sorry about the weird lighting behind me. We actually have this like really gorgeous sunset going on right now, but um, you know, cameras don't like real life. So uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys could deal. So yeah, tell us you've, uh, you know, we haven't seen you in a while. You've been off, uh, you know, winning, winning skirmishes or doing well in skirmishes, doing well in release events. How is, how's it been since, you know, how's your Monarch experience been so far? It's been very uh, interesting. I've had um, a lot of fun, uh, both with trying out the new characters. Um, I've been frustrated with Levia. I haven't quite nailed that one down yet. Um, but I, I do feel like maybe this is because it's the first time I've been in a major release uh, where it's been, um, but it seems like I'm really seeing the differences between how this set functions from a sealed and limited format, how it functions in a normal blitz or classic constructed format. And it's got goodies for both. Uh, and, and it's different. And I'm kind of enjoying understanding the differences that I, I don't maybe think I've noticed in other. I don't know if it's this set specifically, but you know, I've drafted Welcome to Wraith, and I felt like it was a similar experience to playing Constructed or, or playing Blitz. Uh, but one thing I've, I've had a lot of fun with is, is what, what works in Limited doesn't work in, in in Blitz and vice versa. And so I've been trying to just explore. I feel like I'm learning a lot more about, the, even though it's become more complicated, I think. Um, and those nuances through actual gameplay has, has been invaluable. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, why don't you just, just walk me through, because all of my pre-releases uh, were, you know, virtual, well, not virtual, but they were, you know, do at home mostly. So walk me through your pre-releases and then, yeah, so yeah, I guess walk me through the pre-releases, what your takeaway were, what, what you played, what worked, what didn't. Uh, so we had, we had two pre-releases in Houston. I was lucky to be able to, to go to, and the first one um, was... Uh, they were both sealed up. I, I went, I forced Levio. Um, I made justifications for not playing uh, Bolton, even though I pulled a uh, V for Vanguard and a Spillblood, mm. which now I know I absolutely sh for that build. Uh, I forced Levia and I ended up going, I believe, 3 2 1. Um, which wasn't great it was hard to pull off in, or in limited format, especially with, I, I even now, with the con, deck I control, the cards go in there. I don't feel like I have a handle on Leviathan yet. So it was still fun to play, and obviously crack packs. And the second pre-release, I actually won uh, with Bolton. The caveat being uh, we had all agreed ahead of time because most of us night uh, at the other store and uh, we all agreed instead of doing six rounds we'd only play three and I 3 owed with Bolton and was the top light player and had the highest strength of schedule so I technically won with the shortened 
torch. Uh, but it, it was lost. a lot of people came out. A lot of people opened. We had two libraries opened mm-hmm. in our second release. Um, like five feet away from each other. They both opened a, a library pretty early on, which was exciting for them. Not so much for me. I didn't really draft anything cool, but it was the pre-releases were a lot of fun. For the first game to really play the cards, um, I think the card that I learned to love and the one that I ended up winning with Bolton was uh, Overload. Proceed a little or Minnowism. Uh, a little into drawing the Minnowism from your deck to do an Overload, which will automatically have go again because it's it'll automatically hit if it's buffed with Dominate. And then all of that leading into axes with Bolton is just a lot of fun. And I don't think you'll see that in a, a standard build deck, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that uh, go small strategy actually did a video on that. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's yeah. probably not the yeah. most competitive thing, but that's a pretty fun little... I think I think they're all commons too, right? So you could even do like a common format with it. <clears throat> the one where I think uh, there's a the rare one that gives you either the plus two or go again captain skull mm. i think that one's rare and that's another one that works with that great go small um but it was fun to really get to play cards that you know we had talked about some of them we had you know even if you've seen them all spoiled or read all the comprehensive rules before they released seeing how they interact is just fun. Uh, i had a blast on pre-release we can all right, well, awesome. So uh, you've, I mean, then you got a couple, we had a couple weeks, I actually forget the timeline, you had a couple weeks of just your normal Tuesdays, and then you moved into skirmish season down there, or I guess we're still in skirmish season, but you've had two down there already, you said? Yeah, there's were two locally in-person skirmishes. Uh, unfortunately, I was only able to make it to one of them, uh, but I did get to play in one, and I did really well. It was a sealed uh format for this one and I, I drafted bolted again or i ended up going with bolton uh ended up going five and one made top eight uh then we did a draft i drafted leviah i was the only leviah drafter so i had some pretty good pick of the litter of the mm. cards but unfortunately i ran into the one who draft chain and just could not compete with the arcane damage it was a very close match, and it was very fun to be able to make a top eight, but didn't get the win in that one. Yeah, I would imagine Chain, especially in, in draft when you have more control, I would imagine Chain is very strong because there's not a lot of, like, all of the arcane blocking is spell void, so it's all single shot, right? So Chain yeah, seems it, pretty scary in sealed, yeah. yeah. Or excuse me, in draft. Yeah, especially if you're the only one in a pot of eight. But I think you're putting choices to people with their equipment. Like, if you take away Leviathan's Evan uh, helmet, she's having to decide, do I want to stop this arcane or save my debt uh, mm-hmm. on a turn? And same thing with, with Prism. Do you want your Dreamweavers to force through your Phantasm, or do you want your Dreamweavers to stop some, some arcane damage? So it's actually kind of well, in that aspect, it forces choices on the limited amount of equipment you even have. Yeah, yeah, he seems he seems pretty scary. So, um, okay, so you, and then so how did that work? So they they did draft for six rounds, and then they top aided. Did you draft again? Well, it was sealed uh, for six rounds. Um, oh, you did Bolton, and, and then, then draft, and then you did Bolton, and then you drafted Levi. Gotcha. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right. I got you. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then the next one, was the next one constructed or? Uh, the one that I didn't get to attend was a just normal blitz tournament. Okay, normal con- did, blitz constructed. Uh, okay. You know, six rounds and then cut to top eight. Do you know who ended I do up know taking that? that Kano won. Kano one won. One of our local guys, uh, Kano won it. No Ira, though. Interesting, interesting. Uh, I know there was some Ira there. Uh, I don't know the complete spread of what the top eight was, but I do know that uh, one of the local guys who's a very good player took it down with Kano. Hmm. Cool. So have you, you guys have been, that's traditionally what you guys play on your Tuesday nights, right, is Blitz. So what have you been seeing um, 
what have you been seeing there? Are people trying just mostly the new stuff or where are we at or where are you at? It's kind of been a weird mix. Uh, like for myself, I, I tried Leviya um, a couple times. It didn't work out. Uh, I've used the Bolton Stabers build a couple times and I did pretty well. I think each time I dashed one, I didn't went out, but I either went three and one or, or, or four and one, depending on how many rounds there were. Um, and I've had fun with it. Last week, I was kind of to try a new deck, and I didn't really feel like playing Bolton. I just used the chain starter deck, and that did not go well for me. Um, I, I, but I did it because I wanted to learn more about how the interactions and how he plays a little bit. So I just took a starter deck and played it for the sake of playing it. And that may have helped because this week we did a draft instead of uh, Blitz, and I drafted Chain and went 3-0 and ended up winning a Cold Foil Cater. Nice. Yeah, I am I'm really struggling with Chain. I've been trying to get him going for Constructed, and uh, I'm just really struggling with him on a personal level. I think, I think it's just the combination of how you have to play him versus my own personal play style, but it's, it's a me uh, problem, do- right? So. Yeah, I do think that I, in what I've played with him, mostly in limited and a starter deck experience against non-starter decks isn't the best example, but I don't know how good he is in Blitz outside of limited. I think he's great in limited because of the arcane damage. But there is apparently a very, very good chain deck on our local group that is just getting in con- classic constructed. And it's apparently a very strong, very... Uh, efficient deck that just constant pressure i haven't got to see it because i don't often get to make it out on saturdays where they're doing classic constructing but if it gives you any hope there, there's a way and there's a guy who, who's got a deck out there who's owning with chain right now uh, but i don't know how whole, how much that holds true in, in even in blitz because once somebody has one null rune and blitz with only 40 cards and only, you know, you're only going to get up to, even if you only get up to three or four or five chains or, or shield, uh, shackles, shackles, yeah. You, you, that deck disappears pretty quick. And I think just that extra 20 cards or more that you can have in class constructed buys chain the time it needs to ramp up and keep applying pressure in ways that I don't think we get to see in Blitz because. You get to a point where I think once they have four chain or four shackles, you just block until they're out of deck and you win the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been I'm, no. the, the chain deck I've been trying is is CC because I think that um, we've pretty consistently seen that decks that apply constant. You know, you kind of need like a combo wombo ish for well, with the exception of Ira, you kind of need like a big turn right in blitz and i think chain is more just a constant pressure like you talked about so i think he's probably better not not i think i'm i'm pretty confident he's better in classic constructed yeah i would i would say um, oddly i I see more bolt in 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 blitz um but people are just holding on to dorinthia and it it might be that she's better um the go tall dorinthia Still see a lot of her and Ira and a lot of mainstays. I have seen some prison, uh, a lot of actually different builds that have been effective. Uh, what I haven't seen is I haven't seen a lot of Bolton other than me and my Sabres build. Uh, there's only one person who's really doing Levia right now, uh, mainly because, like I said, I, I I don't have confidence with it yet. But she, she's got a deck actually really consistent, and she manages her blood debt really well, and she tends to do pretty well against the other decks so uh, but as far as the main i think players who play consistently and play at a high level i haven't seen them really transition to the new characters mm-hmm. even prism who i think is strong in either format they're still playing ira they're still playing uh tall dorinthia so that they know something that we don't or they're sticking to what they see the meta changes as we get used to how different interactions work uh, or if they think that those heroes are just better than the new ones yeah i'm i would think i mean i i personally think uh 
Prism is really well positioned for Blitz because all you really need is one big Dreamweaver's turn, and that's like three quarters of your health, right? So yeah. I'm surprised she's not making more waves. Uh, but, you know, what, what do you know? So I've gone up, to, I've gone up against uh, Prisms who have gone the big, just, they almost seems to play kind of like how Bravo is, where it's like, okay, I'll block, I'll have two cards in hand, and I'm hitting you for six to eight. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Maybe I don't get to dominate, but I'm coming at you with a something that's getting two to three cards out of your hand or two to three points of damage every turn, and I can do that every single turn. Mm-hmm. It's just constant, not constant pressure the way like a go wide would, but just consistent damage. Uh, but I've also seen uh, people who have one woman artists and have done the okay, I use the instant, I create three shield tokens, and then I attack you for four, and then I whole rest of my hand next turn is just to defend my shield tokens and whatever I have left, I'm going to start kadachiing you with my shields and then, oh, you killed my shield, take damage for killing my shield. And it's a lot of micro damage. It's really hard to keep up with. And I had a pretty frustrating experience with, I think part of it was, it was a very lucky confluence of cards that were able to get out in a row that I don't think you could rely on it consistently happening. Uh, but it was f- frustrating from the point of view as, uh, oh, I did damage, but I didn't get damage. Not only was my damage prevented, but I took two damage because you have two of the Merciful Retributions out so that I take, I did five to you and popped five of your shields, but I ended up taking ten. Woof. And Woof. It's just not, not fun. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's an instant, right? So there's not a lot, uh, not a lot they can or you can do about it, I guess, right? As long as the timing lines up. But um, yeah, yeah, and and with that build, like I'm surprised, and maybe that's why Dorinthia is more favored than Ira, maybe in against that matchup. Well, I don't think maybe, like almost definitely, because you know those Kadachis. That's the, the Kadachi. The one from the Kadachi is a token, and you're fine with that, right? But but I, I, I just don't have the reps, so I was just curious what you've uh, been seeing in the real world. I think that's another reason why I think Tall Durant is going to remain strong is because no matter what strategy you have, it's hard to keep shield tokens up when it's just I'm going to swing for eight or nine, and I'm going to have an attack reaction if that doesn't hit, uh, versus a go wide it's a lot easier for them to block and mitigate and try to keep their shields up for as long as possible that without that one big hit to force them to hand or something. Uh, that's where I think Tall Dorinthia might actually be better than Bravo against Prism. Yeah, Bravo's pretty well positioned against Prism, but but I mean, yeah, I hear you. I don't know, it's, it's funny, you, you know, the Nourishing Emptiness, right, I know is really popular in Dorinthia, uh, but somebody had, I don't remember who it was, somebody had posted a Kasai build, and he was actually running two copies of Nourishing, and immediately I was like, why are you doing that? And I was like, oh, I know why he's doing that, right? It's for sixes, so. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, there's a lot going on. And I guess that was the other thing. So you said somebody down there's got a really hot Kasai build, right? Yes. He may have converted to uh, to prison, but he has got a really good, just solid Kasai deck. And I've gone up against it twice, and both times I – well, both of the games were extremely, extremely close. Um, one of them I was Ryan R, and I should have won had I not misplayed uh, and rolled a bit of Alpha Rampage instead of uh, – whatever card I did play uh, that would have given me an extra Intimidate. Uh, but the last time I played him, it was Bolton. I was playing Kasai, and he had the Valiant Dynamos. And his deck was already really, really good. And then you add in the Valiant Dynamos, and I don't think I'm exaggerating if I say he stopped at least 7 damage with Valiant Dynamos, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it was as high as 10, because we Rounds back and forth and swinging, you know, doing what we can, blocking, and a very back and forth match. So the going very quickly, going through all a lot of our cards, and 
that card was just anytime you sing twice, you you get to refresh your dynamos, and that is especially against another go wide uh, is going to come in so handy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there was only one turn, in fact, that he didn't attack twice. Um, out of all the rounds, it went back and forth. So it was already a very impressive Kasai build. Uh, Dynamo it to the next level. Yeah. Dynamo is really, really good with her. Um, but I am curious, and I, I don't want to go through it now. We'll do a separate video for it just for time. But I really want to go through your Bolt and Sabres build. Because that's something that feels like, to me, it should be really good in Blitz. Because you can really get that just massive explosive turn, right? I assume you're playing Gallantry Gold there, right? So you gold, take flight, Lumina, and just start chopping. I, I mean, I assume that's how it goes, right? So, I I actually uh, don't have Gallantry Gold or Lumina Ascension in my deck. However, oh really? They probably should be uh, because it would be better, I think. Uh, but yeah, currently, actually. The, the, the build I've actually had some success with is, is it doesn't include those, but they, they should. I realized the value of Gallantry Gold after actually playing Bolton and Blitz. I'm sorry, in a, a sealed. Because uh, I happened to to have that equipment slot and I hadn't used them before. And also the other confusion I had was that I, for some reason, am convinced that Gallantry Gold is a chest slot <laughs> and not an arm slot. So since I was going sabers, I'm gonna go courage of blade hold, of right. course. And then um, I think it was in fact a, one of the practice games with you that I was not a chess piece. It was an arm. So also part of the reason why I hadn't actually taken the effort of replacing it in my physical deck. Because um, I think when I built it, I just didn't occur to me that it's an arm slot that would be better uh, for Bolton, especially. Um, over the brazers. Yeah, that was that was a practice game we did, yeah. It's on video forever captured in in time. Great. Yeah. That's okay. I mean you you weren't, you know, I was the warrior player, you were you were the the hammer guy, so and the brute. I think it's the what throws me off cuz it's the picture seems like it's focusing focusing on it as a chess piece, so I just didn't bother to actually read the card and assume it was a chess piece. Yeah, I think I mean because your, your Courage pop, I mean, Courage can defend for two, and then you can pop it to make all your sword swings free. Lumina is free. Gives you a double. It gives you plus one and lets you swing with them all again. Um, I would think I would think you'd want to run Courage and Lumina. I would be pretty sure. Because that's... Yeah, the way I've, I've been playing the, the big turn has been the V for Vanguard, and I felt like... V for Vanguard was better than Lumina Ascension. But uh, I think someone actually commented on one of our videos, actually, and it made me rethink Lumina Ascension in the deck. So I do think it belongs, and I think I discounted it over um, over V for Vanguard just because I think also because of the way my build is, is not focused on a lot of the actual tr- cards that charge. Mm-hmm. It's mostly cards that go into Soul on hit um so i don't have to rely on the charge mechanic to get my go again or get the buff um and, and v for vanguard kind of fills that slot as a double bonus so to speak so yeah but i'll put the meme think, up why not both right why right not both? yes and there's definitely some tweaking to that deck i need to do but uh those cards definitely boom. yeah well cool so that's uh we'll Maybe you and I can get some reps in and fine tune that, and then we'll we'll get the deck tech together up here for everybody. So, um, how is I've been very excited. Well, last topic, and we'll get out of here. I've been very excited about Unlimited coming out because I'm finally getting my stock. I've been very patient, very good, and not spending too much money. Uh, so Unlimited's out, and now I'm spending my money. Um, so you have not had great success with your Unlimited boxes or cases. I've heard. No, I've uh, I've gone through two cases and I've gotten zero legendaries at all, um, which is on par with my two first edition boxes where I only had one legendary and it was Doomsday. 
Mm. So out of four cases, I have zero legendary equipment, mm. um, which is very frustrating. Yeah. I, because I especially that. with, I feel like right now, unlimited prices are very reasonable for the singles. And I could have bought a Carrion Husk and a Valiant Dynamos for less than that last case I bought of unlimited. Um, I'm happy to have supported my store, but it's definitely very frustrating to open two cases of unlimited and have zero legendaries. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, seems reasonable to be frustrated about that one, but don't worry. Other people are getting like three legendaries for their cases. So yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little, it, you know, distribution is what it is. Random is random, but I'm a little disappointed at the distribution in the set. Um, I was kind of hoping yeah, it would get like, fixed and unlimited, but I guess not. So I feel like it, it's different because I don't think, and I could be wrong, but I, I've opened a lot of Welcome to Wraith, both first edition and unlimited. I've opened a lot of Arcane Rising, both unlimited and uh, first edition or alpha. Uh, and I don't think there was ever a case where I didn't get a legendary. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that should be a safe bet. Like if I'm going to buy a sealed case, I I don't know if it's too much to ask or if that's not what I should expect, but I, or maybe it was just, I was spoiled previously. I don't know if they've changed the algorithm. I just, that was kind of the reason why you bought a case would be that the legendary is going to be in there. You don't know what it is. Obviously it could be one you already have, or it could be something that you don't need, but it was going to be there. And now three out of four cases with this set without a legendary and it makes me not want to buy um sealed products mm -hmm. because when kingdom comes out if they're going to charge 250 or 300 dollars for first edition i don't think i want to do that again um i didn't do it this time but i don't i don't think i'll be making the choice to spend a thousand dollars on a case you know when kingdoms comes out and if I don't feel confident that I can rely on a sealed product giving me uh, uh, even an unlimited uh, legendary, I might just stick to buying singles, which I never thought I'd get to at this point. But with the number of police events and draft events we've had, I have a pretty decent amount of the commons and uncommons and a decent amount of rares. Um, and I could just buy the rest and not have to buy sealed, which sucks because I'd love to support my local stores gun guy and i feel like i'm being pushed to a point where if the distribution isn't reliable or, or I, I or maybe it's my own ignorance not understanding what may have changed or if it's always been this way and i've just been lucky in every case of, i just would hate to be pushed to where it just doesn't make sense to buy sealed yeah i i don't think you're off base i mean you know, there's always the person out there in the internet world who's watching this who's like, well, random is random, meh. But, and it, that's true, but it, but it's not, right? Because, we, I mean, it was, the, it was the exception to the rule in the previous sets that there would not be a legendary in a case. Like, it was the except, like, you, you would, you would hear about, you know, you'd hear about, like, the one-off thing and you wouldn't, I mean, it was just accepted you would get a legendary per case, Um and you know, if, if the distribution changed, that's that's fine. But you know, random's not random. Random wasn't random before, and, and if it's random now, then it is. But um, I, I hear you. I, I think that with that comes a certain connotation. I personally don't think they intentionally changed anything. I think they just didn't have a handle on how the packs got put together. Um, but that's just, I, I don't know. I'd be curious I don't know if, it, if your, your theory about the mixed match wrapping having an effect on that. I, I, I think maybe it's not that direct proposal, but there's something, I think there's something systematic. I think there was a systematic change of something on the sorting level that because we've, we've seen too many reports of double legendary boxes and it's too many reports of zero legendary boxes. And at some point that should balance out right like you know yeah and that's the other part of it is is uh, as much it is an issue but i don't know if it works out the same but the expectation is cold foil or one rainbow foil in that slot if you don't get a legendary you'll get a cold foil uh, equipment or you'll get a rainbow foil and unlimited in my first box or first case I did get a legendary in Doomsday, but I only got two cold foils mm -hmm. out of that same case. 
So I was down a, a cold foil, which kind of sucks. Uh, it would be awesome to have it. Uh, I think in the second case, I did get uh, four cold foils. But then my unlimited, uh, first unlimited case that I opened this week, I not only didn't get a legendary, I only got two rainbow foils. And it just seems kind of like I understand random is random, but there should be four in a case and there's it's not i don't know what the distribution should be but i feel like if it's whatever the odds of getting a legendary if there's a placed with a normal rainbow foil well neither of those things are happening right no i uh yeah i mean it it, it is what it is but i i agree with you and i i, I sympathize i mean i i don't necessarily i haven't gotten shafted yet but i you know, I fully expect to jet that way. If I pull something great that I'm happy. Right. But no, I, uh, yeah, even your, your live stream the other day with two boxes. Uh, I think you had a great run for two boxes. You pull an L, uh, those are a great two boxes. Yeah. No, hard to complain about. no legendary. Well, and then, and then see that, but that's the thing, right. Is I even t- you know, I told myself that I was like, all right, I'm buying loose boxes. There's pretty much zero chance in hell. I'm going to get an L because somebody was opening the cases. They pulled the L and then moved on. But based on what we've seen, that actually doesn't even hold anymore, right? So maybe maybe it is intentional to stop people from doing that. I, I don't know. Um, I I doubt it, but it's possible. But either way, um, yeah, you, I mean, you have a really good point about the singles, right? I mean, if it all comes out in the wash, but, you know, it used to be don't buy loose packs because you're not getting your thing out of the, you know, somebody could open the cold foil out of the box and then call it a day. And then it was, well, don't buy boxes because somebody could be taking the legendary out of the case. Well, now if it's like you have to buy a pallet in order to get your distribution to match up, like let's just let the big guys do that and single out, right? So, And I will say, out of fairness of loose packs, the only time I've ever opened an eye from a random three packs I bought was my buy-in at a local blitz, and it was completely awesome to have pulled that um yeah i mean fair enough. i don't know if i'll get that lucky again but uh the only time i pulled a fable was just a random three pack purchase at the register well maybe you're paying for it now so there you go yeah probably all right well speaking of sealed product <laughs> and singles i want to give shout out to our supporters so my friends over at Gun Guy Games, they're where I get my sealed product, and Josh gets some of his uh, non-local sealed product. You can use code COMMANDO10 at checkout for 10% off your purchase. That's good for anybody who uses the code. And then my buddy over at Fab Foundry, local guy to me, he actually just, it was earlier this week, put up his uh, unlimited singles. Prices look amazing. Go check him out. If you use the link below when you're over there buying stuff, you will uh, give a small kickback. I get a small commission on that, which I can then use to to buy my stuff. And actually, I was over there. If you use the link and you hit the home button, it erases all the bonus. So you have to click the link and then throw it in your cart in order in order for it to work. So, But anyway, thank you for doing that if you're over there shopping. So uh, thanks, Josh, for making the time. It's glad I'm glad to have you back after your uh, Monarch sabbatical. Um, we'll get, we'll get some more run out of you before, uh, before the next set comes out. So you got anything else before we get out of here? That's it. All right. Go commando. Go commando.